Well, good morning, Facebook Live. Welcome to the show, Up to the Minute. My name is Todd Duplantis, and we've got your HCC news and information. And guess what? It's Thursday, Family Virtual Family Fun Day, and we've got some information there on the Bayou Arts Festival, Bayou City Arts Festival. That's coming up. All that and more. Packed show today. Brittany Pacheco joining us from her home. Good morning, Brittany. How are you today? Good morning, Todd. I'm doing very well. I'm very happy to be here as well because we do have a great show in store for everyone. So before we jump into it, just a reminder, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that notification bell so you can be the first to find out the latest video uploads from us. And last but not least to our audience, hit that share button at the bottom of this podcast. That way it pops up on your personal news feed so we can grow our audience, but just more importantly, share this information to those who are not following us because today we have some really important information to share in regards to uh, what's going on with HCC. So Todd, let's get into it. All right, Brittany, stick around. We'll check in with you later on in the show. You know, uh, it is a Thursday, our virtual family fun day. And we've got Kelly Batterson joining us this morning. She's the executive director of the Bayou City Arts Festival. Good morning to you, Kelly. We got your mic off. If we can get you to unmute your mic. There you go. Good morning. Can you hear me? I can hear you. How are you this morning? I'm really good. Uh, Thanks. I'm happy to uh, be with you again today. Yeah, we're going to be talking about the Bayou City Arts Festival. Usually it happens in the spring, but you got some announcements to make, and we'll talk about when it's happening this year. Stick around, Kelly. We'll be with you very shortly. But first, we want to talk to two guests. Uh, you probably recognize both of them. Dr. Betty Fortune is the Executive Director of Success and Completion, and Dr. Desmond Lewis, the Dean of College Readiness. They're both co-chairs of the Quality Enhancement Plan, or QEP. Good morning to you both. How are y'all doing this morning? Good morning, Todd. I'm doing great. Good morning, morning. Desmond. Always good, Dr. Fortune. Good to see you both. It's always great to see both of you. And Dr. Lewis, I mentioned earlier, we are depending on you today because when Desmond's on the show, he always brings a crowd of viewers. So today, <laughs> we're depending on that, Desmond. All right. Let's get into uh, what we're going to talk about. Dr. Fortune, we're going to talk with you first. Um, maybe you can tell us about the Quality Enhancement Plan. What does that involve? So the Quality Enhancement Plan is a significant component of our SACS accreditation process. What it provides and forces and, and brings to forefront is the need for institutions to develop plans around student success to keep the focus on helping students be successful. So this plan is about taking a systemic look around our, our college as a whole to find out where the barriers are, where do our students need, how are they progressing? And then that's what the Quality Enhancement Plan is designed to do. That must be pretty tricky right now because over the last year, the needs of our students have changed dramatically, I would imagine, than they were the previous year. How do you gauge that? Because last year, it seems like all of us needed something. <laughs> so absolutely things have changed because because of the pandemic things have changed and and so we we realize that one thing that we have to do at this point is find out who our new students are because they are not the same uh, and they don't have the same needs that our students previously had so one of the things that we're going to be doing in the fall semester is uh being tasked with having focus groups and some surveys to actually talk to our students about um, what are their needs? What do they come with? Is it food insecurity? Is it uh, that you don't you don't know how to use a laptop? Whatever their needs are, we need to be able to talk to them and let them tell us what they need from us, so that in order in order that we can develop strategies, processes, plans, those kinds of things, strategies that we could wrap these services around our students. Again, our students are very different now, very different from what we had before. Dr. Lewis, let's talk about the approach that will be used to assure that this work is systematic across the district. Well, when you think about that, just like Dr. Forsen was saying, our students have a lot of different needs, but so does our institution holistically. So to, and to ensure that everything is systematic and we, we have all stakeholders uh, working together, like think about gears integrated. We put together a multi-phase process by which all these voices will come together. Think of harmonizing in a choir. Across the campus, we have a lot of great singers, a lot of great things happening. But how do you begin to 
bring all of that together. Using our pathways work and other processes, we've thought through this. We've put together a, a QEP or Quality Enhancement Advisory Council that's inclusive of all sectors of the institution. And let me re reiterate that, all sectors. We're not just talking about student service, instruction, or someone here. I mean, we have voices all over. So what right. we've done, we've worked with um, reading circles. And with the reading circles, we had hundreds, over 500 individuals. Now, now let me say that again, Todd. Over 500 people reading the same book at the same time at the college, being led by individuals from different areas who were really, really, really innovated to think about how our college can become more of a student-ready college. As Dr. Fortune was saying, student-centeredness and being equity-minded is, is the thing that's moving us forward. So we had these focus groups. We also did student and faculty assessments and surveys. So not only are we sitting back and saying, this is what we think students need, and this is what we think the school needs, we're taking the voices of individuals from every tier of the college, bringing those together, to use my analogy again, to harmonize, right. to bring forth something that resonates uh, long-term at the college. And now as we move forward with this work, we do have a specific um, plan in place of how to shape things or how to let the work shape itself. We also had a few engagement sessions throughout these uh, the last year with outside professional development individuals, such as we had a, a webinar to kick it off called Lighting the Fire with Mr. Uh, Diego Navarro, where individuals came to participate, heard about how we would engage our students to, to really see what they need. And also the um, renowned author, Tia um, Brown McNair, uh, and her book, Becoming a College uh, Student-Ready College, which is for the reading circle. And we still, and uh, two weeks ago, Dr. Fortune, you, you could correct me if I'm wrong, we had our Student Success Summit, whereas I'm sure many of our viewers um, came and participated in that. We will continue to have uh, opportunities for further um, voices to become a part of, again, that resonating echo of change at the institution and continuous improvement. You mentioned 500 people that were in the reading circle that you were, I mean, obviously it's not hard to get buy-in to what you're doing. It sounds like, I mean, looking at the, the number of faculty and staff we have, those are pretty great, pretty good numbers out of the whole lot. Um, are you finding that faculty are, are more wanting to get involved and, and get into this initiative right now? Maybe more than they would have been before the pandemic? I can honestly say uh, from the faculty that I've talked to, they are really excited. I'm not sure if it's more so because I, uh, before the pandemic, we started this work about a year before the pandemic broke. And it was like when we put the call out, we actually asked for volunteers. And, um, and Dr. Lewis and I had so many response, so much response. We had to actually go through the applications to see how many we would take. They were really excited about this notion of how we make our students successful. How do we help them to complete? How do we help them to transfer to four-year institutions? The whole nine yards was about how do we help these students move forward in their lives and, and earn living wages so that they can take care of their families. So the, the um, excitement around this work was there from the very beginning. I must say, I was really surprised during the pandemic that it still remained. And since that time, we've tried to pull together a design team and we still have phone calls coming in. We still get emails calling in and say, I want to be on this part of the design team. Can I be on this part? And it's, I tell you, it's just, just a, a beautiful a beautiful thing to see unfolding in front of us because I've been at this institution almost 20 years and I have never seen such uh, involvement or excitement around this kind of work before. So this is so refreshing to me. Uh, Desmond and I always tease one another. We say, we love this group. We'll never, we, we wish all of our groups that we work with could be like this group because they have really drank the Kool-Aid, as you might say, and <laughs> bought into this notion of moving our students forward. It's, it's been a wonderful experience. It really has been. Dr. Lewis, you talked about the next steps or a bit of what you're going to be doing next, but I also understand you guys have a newsletter that you distribute. Who's on that list and, um, and how often is that distributed to keep people up to date? Well, we're working on the newsletter and it has to do with the timeline of this process. And as Dr. Fortune was saying, with our quality enhancement plan, 
it's a part of the overall institutional planning, SAC COC accreditation, and many of those things. So uh, thus far, who's on that list? We have the QEP Advisory Council, those individuals whom of which have been to our student success summits, but we are creating a landing page whereas the entire, all of our stakeholders, internal and external, will be updated with that information. I'm going to I'm gonna throw this out there for you guys. When you do make a presentation to the board, when you get your website up and running, come see us at HCC TV. We'd love to put together a video for you to talk about what you're doing, get some sound bites maybe of the folks that are involved, have you two on there because you're very passionate about this, to let the community and everyone know what you're doing, all right? We love it. Love it. Thank you. And, and Dr. Thank Lewis you. and Dr. Fortune, thanks for being here on the show. Co-chairs of the Quality Enhancement Plan. If folks want to know more information about this, where can they visit you on the website or do they just email you? Just email us. Okay. All right. We'll have your email addresses in our social media post for the show. Thanks to both of you for being here. Great work and continued success. Thank thanks. you so much. Bye-bye. All right, we're going to move on to Kelly Batterson. You may remember Kelly. We talked with her last year regarding the Bayou City Arts Festival. Kelly, when we talked last time, I think it was uh, in the midst of this pandemic, shortly after we were all sequestered, and you guys were figuring out a way of doing things online um, in a different world. Let's talk about where you are now because, hey, we're, we're starting to move out of this pandemic, not just yet, and everyone's used to having the festival in the spring. When is it going to happen now? So now we're focused on our fall event and we feel very comfortable that uh, the environment we're in right now is going to be uh, continue to get better, you know, as you're hearing. Uh, so it will be October 9th and 10th. It'll be downtown, which is our normal location that we have our fall event. Uh, it will be the same hours, 10 to six, but we're so excited to get everybody back together, engage with everyone. It'll have been two years. I mean, yeah. October of 2019 was the last time yeah. You saw us out there with our artists and performers and yeah, so it's a it's exciting to come back and do that. And we feel like it's a it's a welcome back, it's a comeback for us. So we're we're pretty excited. So when 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 we're used to seeing the Bayou City Arts Festival, we're used to seeing a lot of art, a lot of vendors, some music, some food, are all those things gonna be available? Are you looking at doing things the way you were or are you gonna to have to maybe limit crowds? Obviously, we may be looking at masks then. Um, maybe you can tell us more about what's going on with that. I mean, we're obviously going to follow uh, very closely to what our, you know, medical professionals in our city are going to tell us. And we're also partially co-funded by the city of Houston. So we have to look at those protocols. We yeah. definitely want to make sure the event that we have is going to be safe and going to make people feel comfortable. They're spread out. There's enough room. We're giving them, you know, all of the hand sanitizing things that we need to do. And if we need to have them still wear masks, that's what we'll definitely do. But as far as the um, attractions and our artists, we're bringing all that back. We're bringing all that back safely. It's going to be the event that you remember. We're gonna have a couple cool surprises. Uh, we've got some great decor that we're adding. And so you're gonna, you're gonna experience the festival just like it is and, and even better. Incredible. Looking forward to seeing that again. Things are going to be operating a little differently this uh, this fall. I imagine um, you guys are going to be working cashless this time, then, right? Yeah, we will. We'll have a new ticket platform, so we're definitely going to be doing our, our pre-sale early so people can get their tickets. And that also allows us, if there is a crowd control, if we have to do some sort of time slotted so we can know how many people are on site at one time, we're ready to do that. We've got the platform for that. So we're definitely going to make it easy and cashless. Bring your credit card, debit card. You can get anything you want with those uh, two, yeah, two cards, and it'll be a, a nice, easy experience make it easy for everyone, welcome them back and just all be together. And our artists are looking so forward to it. I mean, this is a, it's one of those events where a lot of the same artists come, but we have different artists and, but they see each other once or twice a year. So it's like a little reunion for them. So they're so excited to see people they haven't seen in the last two years. And let's talk about the artists because I know this last year has been uh, very hard on the art community. Um, and a lot of these artists who are there and the vendors who are there at your festival, that's how they make their living. Their bread and butter for the year are going from festival to festival to, to make funds to survive on. How, from what you have heard, how have they been dealing with the last year when things were shut down for most of the last 13 months? 
they are, uh, they're an amazing, resilient group of people. I mean, they have some of them uh, that we've reached out to and connected with. They're making more art right now. It's, you know, it's just been an interesting time for them uh, to have that sort of downtime that they're not yeah. used to. Usually they're on the road all the time. They're doing this whole festival circuit. So you've got a lot of people that um, it's been an interesting time for them. And they're, they're figuring out new ways to, to create new art and be inspired in different ways. So we feel like everyone's, um, they're okay, but they're ready to come back and they just, they just wanna be back again in that uh, environment. Last year, you launched a virtual event called uh, Save Our Art Campaign. Maybe you can tell us how that went because I believe that's what we talked about last time. Yeah, we did a, a Save Our Art Campaign last summer just to, to help us keep going. I mean, we are you know a 49-year-old organization that's been in Houston for a very long time. A lot of people you know remember it from the days when it was on Westheimer. Uh, and then oh, there's yeah. new people that maybe don't know that much about us. Um, but so we, de we decided to launch a Save Our Art campaign, like an umbrella campaign where we could do different events within that. But we set up a GoFundMe, a Mighty Cause. We set up a text to donate. You can, we're always looking for uh, support and help so we can continue our mission. But it's been good, and we'll continue under that umbrella with some some summer things that we're still working on. So you'll you'll still hear that and see that campaign. You mentioned it's your 49th year. Are there plans now for the 50th in 2022? We're hoping everything is back to normal in 2022, and we can really celebrate our 50th. Yes, we're we're going to do some special things for our 50th. We're working on those ideas as we speak. Will there be preview events before the uh, fall festival this year? I know you guys have had happy hours with artists and things like that. Will you be doing that again? We're continuing, yeah, we're working on that right now. We're working on, uh, we've got a small community event that we're working on uh, that's coming up June 5th. We're working on the details and the times, but it's gonna be in Fifth Ward and it's gonna be with one of our featured artists, Tony Piranha. Um, he's an amazing artist and it's gonna be like a community art festival type thing, very small with just uh, music and kids activities. So we'll put some information on our website about that that's coming up. And then we're also looking at doing some unique summer things. Um, you can probably, look for us to do an art crawl with some of the local breweries. Cool. We're also looking for an evening fundraiser that we'll be doing with um, art and music, that combination. So we'll be doing some things this summer that are gonna be fun. Well, there you heard it folks, October 9th and 10th, downtown Houston, the Bayou City Arts Festival returns in person. So we'll all get a chance to go out there. When you guys have this, um, we wanna send out one of our uh, folks to do a little live shot for us out there. So maybe we oh, can catch up yeah. with you out there and, and promote your festival then. Good, good, we welcome that. Thank you, Kelly. Kelly Batterson, the Executive uh, Director of Bayou City Art Festival. Thanks for being here this morning and congratulations on getting back out there. We hope to see you soon. Thank you, thanks. All right, if you want more information on, this, on the festival itself, we'll have the link in the social media post for the show. All right, Brittany Pacheco at her home studio. We're gonna start bringing you up to date with some HCC news and announcements, starting with something that's happening tomorrow, and it's the last in this series, Building a Sense of Belonging. So this Friday, we will be in the final gathering, as Todd just mentioned, of HCC faculty, staff, students, and community partners to provide opportunities for action-oriented approaches to a more connected, inclusive, and equitable environment for us all. So building a sense of belonging will be tomorrow, April 30th, from 9 a.m. until noon. Check your HCCS emails for updates and to register. All right, and uh, Smoke Free HCC, the deadlines for submissions for that contest and campaign are tomorrow. They've got a number of things to help uh, continually remind our HCC community that if HCC goes smoke free, we have the chance of becoming the first community college to do so in the greater Houston area. All right, there's a video contest, there's a song scholarship contest the clean the air song, you can make that. And there's also a go smoke free tea giveaway and HCC quit kits. Those are all going on this week for the quit kits. You can sign up by the end of next week or the middle of next week. So keep that in mind. All right, so more information, we'll have the link in the post, but make sure you check it out and learn more about this campaign that's going on. Free laptops and hotspots. That's right, free. Tell us about it, Brittany. So thanks to our HCC public service librarians and the Rotaract Club, HCC students may qualify for free laptops and hotspots. This is going to go a long way for many, many of our students. So you can visit uh, two websites that we're going to 
post in the ship in this post after the show. Um, but we are definitely encourage our students to take advantage of these opportunities for, you know, laptops and hotspots. I mean, who doesn't need that these days? Come on. Who doesn't need it? Everybody could use a laptop and hotspot. We can all have that in our life. All right, more information on that links in the social media post. All right, Habitat for Humanity, Women Bill joined HCC and Mac Woods, that's right, and her Boss Chicks team by donating to reach their goal of $70,000 to continue their construction project. Uh, Lowe's Home Improvement donated as did TC Energy. So corporate donations are welcome. You want to get involved with this meaningful cause, we'll have the link in the social media post for the show. And as we heard earlier from Dr. Fortune with some of the concerns our students may have right now, food insecurity is a very real thing in our community. And we're working with the food bank, Brittany, to try to uh, uh, alleviate this. That's right. So registration for Houston's uh, food banks, community health market trailers, formerly known as our Eagle Mobile Food Market, <clears throat> pardon me, um, we'll, they'll be at multiple HCC campuses. So all HCC community members can sign up to receive free groceries. Just need to pick your campus, the date, the time you would like to pick up the food. You can email hcc.cares at hccs.edu. That email too will be posted after this show. All right, are you getting ready to graduate? Well, first off, congratulations. You deserve it and you've worked hard to get to this point. If you're not going to another college though, maybe you're going directly in the workforce and you may have had a few student loans, just a few dollars you borrowed. Well, guess what? Sooner or later, they're gonna come knocking on your door asking for payment, repayment, I should say. And uh, we wanna help you with that. We want to make sure you're prepared and our financial aid department is available to speak with you to uh, talk about your options and the smart ways of paying back student loans. Check our district Facebook page or the link in the post after this show. Be prepared before you graduate. All right, uh, Brittany, we are going to be heading back to campuses. Most of our faculty and staff around April, or I should say May 24th. And um, face-to-face -face instruction is most importantly starting this summer and of course in the fall as well. But there are many ways that our students can take courses right now if they log on to one site. That's right. So we are talking five different ways that students can, you know, do their classes and get that certification and degree. So this does include full-time face-to-face classes. Now those face-to-face -face classes will be very, very small as well as offering hybrid courses. Again, those will be small. So early registration is incredibly important for students to, to secure the one of five modalities that we're offering. Those five include online, anytime, online on a schedule, the hybrid lab uh, courses that meet safely face-to-face -face on campus and virtually, our hybrid course that's basically the same thing, just the lecture course, and then our small in-person face-to-face classes. So uh, once again, it's incredibly important for everyone to register early, secure those classes, how you want to take those classes, and you can go to hccs.edu slash now in order to check out the, our programs, but register. Summer and fall registration is currently open, so once again, be sure to uh, take advantage of the early onset uh, schedule and secure your classes. That's right. Secure your classes, secure your seat right now. And you know, Brittany, the good thing about if you sign up early for classes, you can still, and say you do need to pay some money out of your pocket, um, there are payment plans and you have a longer time to pay it back. That's true. Yes. And we have other modality, not modalities, but other methods of uh, payment as well. I was a scholarship recipient. I know that our HCC Foundation, their scholarship application is currently open. Uh, so this is open to all students both domestic and international, you know, you could get a scholarship that'll pay for your books, tuition, you know, I mean, come on, it's there, it's just apply. There. <laughs> yeah, and another website to throw out uh, as far as scholarships to pay for your tuition and books, we have specific programs where your tuition is paid for out of grants, meaning you don't have to pay it back. If you wanna explore those programs, there are a number of them available right now. Go to hccs.edu slash 
fast hyphen track. So that'll list a number of courses, everything from like cybersecurity to uh, there are some courses in the medical field on there as well. Also some workforce instruction courses. The idea is you take these classes, they're short term. So in the, you would get out possibly within six months or less. You get a certification, you go into the workforce, everything's paid for by a grant. Go to that website today and you can find out more on this. Okay, that's going to wrap up the show for today. Tomorrow, it's Film Friday, Brittany, and we've got a special guest for that. Uh, we do. So we couldn't resist having NYSOD winner Jenny Waldo on again. So she is uh, part of the HCC filmmaking program. She's an instructor who has also actually made a film uh, due out later this year, but she has more to share with us as well. So that's going to be great for our students who are interested in uh, filmmaking. Yeah, so that's happening tomorrow, and our NYSOD winners will be back on the show. We've got Dijon Grigsby, uh, heads up the biology program, and we're going to ask her about those careers that grow on you. I, that just sounds that sounds a little creepy, careers that are <laughs> growing on you. But uh, anyway, you want to learn about biology? Well, tune in tomorrow, along with our film Friday. Uh, so we're going to have a lot of things to talk about tomorrow. And we're about to go into the weekend, so that's always a bonus there. Um, have we heard if Frank is returning tomorrow? You know what? I have not heard from our friend Frank. Um, hopefully all is well, but you know, we'll reach out to him and find out. We'll find out. So Frank will either be here. Or we may ask Brittany if she's nice. It's her birthday week, so she's in a good mood. Um, and we'll ask her to return. Did you get any good gifts this uh, this week? You know, I actually, uh, I, I did. My my husband went and bought me roses and chocolate-covered strawberries. Wow. And then uh, my, my brother-in-law, um, they bought me my favorite cake, which is red velvet. And oh, yeah, we that's got- good. We got together and and had that. And then yesterday, uh, The Handmaid's Tale dropped on Hulu. So I binged watched the first three episodes of that. So, yeah, it was a good birthday. <laughs> good, good. I'm glad that was. And if you missed it, folks, yesterday was Brittany's birthday. Uh, she is still accepting gifts and well wishes. So please feel free to join her for that and make sure she uh, she she feels the love. All right. On that note, though, I do just quickly want to give a shout out to my niece, uh, Leanne, who her birthday is today. So yeah. was she the one we met? Uh, maybe. Okay. All right. <laughs> I, don't know if you, I have, I have three nieces. HCC. Well, you brought one by HCC and yeah. um, I think you brought out on a story with you. Uh, that was Cameron then. Okay. Yeah. That was my other niece. All right. Yeah. When we, when we went out and did stories, but we'll get you back out doing a story again. All right, Brittany. Uh, uh, maybe we'll see you tomorrow. Maybe we'll see you, Frank. Maybe we'll see Frank. But one way or another, I'll be here and we'll see you hopefully tomorrow, 10 a.m. live for Up to the Minute.